Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Plus Ultra Fitness Podcast's first ever battle episode. So what might that be, you might ask? Well, we decided to have a little bit of a friendly debate today. So all of us mutually respect each other. We mutually respect both dub and sub anime, but we wanted to debate which was better, dub or sub. So each of us took a side and we debated, you know, What's better, dub or sub? Just to, you know, create some friendly kind of conflict, like a boxing match, right? You might have respect for your opponent, but at the end of the day, you want to win. You want to win this debate. So we had a little bit of a, a friendly debate. We debated what we thought was better, dub or sub. We gave some points why. Um, yeah, and honestly, it was just a lot of fun. We we were all laughing and chatting at the end um, about like, ah, well, you know, here's a point that I would have made for sub if I was on team sub, or here's a point that I would have made for team dub if I was on team dub, and just having fun with it. So yeah, it was all in good fun, but we want to take the conversation a little bit further, and we want to know what team are you on? Are you on team dub, or are on you team? Are you on team sub? So. Yeah, I think uh, in order for this debate to continue, I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comments on YouTube. I want to hear what you guys have to say on uh, the on uh, on Instagram. You know, put put your view, tag us in it, and let us know: Are you team dub or are you team sub? Let us know why. Or join the Discord group at the link below and let us know in the Discord group you know, which team you're on. Maybe we'll even create a channel um, specifically debated for team dub or team sub and let kind of the debate kind of continue in there. So yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's just keep the conversation going and let's have fun with it. Now, also after the episode, uh, me and the guys were talking a little bit and we want to bring the plus ultra fitness podcast to Texas smash con in Irving, Texas, in January. Now, I don't know what all the details look like that yet. So we're still in the process. This is just an idea in our heads right now. We're in the process of seeing what that looks like. I know that I'm going to be there regardless. We talked about it today and it'd be really nice to have a booth. It'd be really nice to have a panel. It'd be really nice to have the whole Plus Ultra Fitness podcast crew out there. So if any of you guys listening want to meet the crew, you guys can meet the crew and we could just meet more people and turn more people onto the podcast and really build this community, really build the discord channel, really build all these things we're trying to build. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to help out with that, there's some financial costs required for us. Um, you guys can donate at the PayPal link below that helps the podcast raise some money to help with travel costs, to help pay for the booth, to help pay for some of that stuff. Needless to say, we're all going to be paying a decent amount of money out of pocket to make that happen if we can make it happen. But if you guys have the means to help out with that, and that's something you guys want to do, we would really appreciate any help you guys could give. Um, and if not, just, you know, thank you for listening. Obviously there's no obligation to, and just having you hitting play on this episode, listening to the episode is support enough. But if you want to go above and beyond that, there's your option too. Thank you guys. Enjoy the episode. Let's get started. Okay, guys, welcome to our first battle episode. We are going to have a nice little kind of formal fun debate here about what is better, dubbed anime or subbed anime. So Zach is going to get us kicked off with a quick intro here. But before we get started, I have a quick pop quiz question for Eddie and Evan. Who is the, the Japanese voice actor for Fat Gum? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <Freaking> <laughs> crickets, crickets. Okay. With that said, uh, Zach, kick us off with the opening statement for Team Dub here. Well, Team Dub or the winning team, we will say, 
we're on the uh -huh. side of, of dub. This is me. This means that it was changed to the dialect of whatever you're watching it of. So in anime, if you're watching it in an English dub, where I'm pretty sure we can name a lot more English dub actors than some of them can name sub actors. But we'll get into that later. So first thing, we'll start <laughs> off. Bottom line, if you're sub over dub, you're two things. You're selfish and you're narrow-minded. I'm going to say it. And I got, I got a list of points here. I want to point out why. Uh, let, me, let me put my, put my glasses on here because, you know, that's actually going to lead me to my, my next point here of how, you know, some people just can't see too well. You know, they can't read too well. You have small children who can't even read at all. But you wanted to get them into this, this beautiful thing of, say, anime or whatever kind of shows that you're watching all over the world. And it, it, it's like you guys don't want these people involved. It, it's do you hate children? Do you hate older people? It, is this this is the <laughs> thing? Like, is this is kind of like a sub thing? You know, it's it, it's just kind of what we're getting from it. And, you know, that, that's why dub is obviously top tier because everybody can get involved in it. Bottom line, if you have somewhat pair of working eyes or ears, you're pretty much good. So here we are, dub. <laughs> you got way more people, way less reading, which it's not hard to read, but sometimes you don't want to read. Sometimes you want to walk around. <laughs> Well, I can personally say that uh, I'm not great at reading. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I'm definitely team dub because, you know, reading is hard. And just to put some context onto my pop quiz question, both me and Eddie are wearing uh, fat gum hoodies today. So I just I just wanted to make sure that, you know, Eddie knew who uh, he was representing for team sub. With that said, team sub, your opening statement, um, Evan or Eddie, give her a go. You want to go, uh, Eddie? I'll go. All right, all right. So, subbing. Uh, subtitles, of course, meaning you get to keep the original language that the anime or whatever you're watching was produced in, because not only things that are, you know, anime are subtitled, it could be other shows from other places. But yeah, a couple things that you could see automatically off the bat is one thing for sure is you don't lose cultural references because what better way to learn about another culture than to see the way it was intended, hear the voices that they picked. Because a lot of the times when it comes to picking voice actors and things like that, there's a specific reason that they were picked because they represent the character in the way that the artist, you know, thought they would be good to be, that thought they would be good to be portrayed. Dub, I will tell you, will sometimes censor what the sub is saying or completely alter what is going on when you're watching. So you are not actually getting the full on end of what the artist or maybe the studio was intending for the viewer to watch. Uh, one thing, more series are available in sub versus dub. I mean, who has time for that, right? Like I have a whole unlimited library of shows to watch because I could sit there and just enjoy it and read. While people that are in dub, one, you gotta wait. Uh, not all your shows are going to be subbed. You're probably going to be a week or two behind. And that by that point, people are going to spoil what's going on for you. So yeah, it just makes sense, you know? A lot of the times, yeah, I will agree that we've all started at Dub. I mean, that's how we all got into these shows and things like that. But, you know, eventually when you start to realize, hey, if you want to keep up and know what's going on, you're going to go with the sub route and everything. And then if you want some more examples here, I'll give you some highlights of times that American series really did the animes that they were trying to portray injustices. So animes that were completely dubbed or practically changed. Let's start off with the numero uno. So let's go with Sailor Moon. So Sailor Moon, as you guys know, or probably if you aren't aware, uh, you know, TV series that used to come on when we were all kids and all that. Uh, one big thing that they did there is they took out a lot of episodes and things like that because they thought it would be too adult for the kids to watch. And they didn't think it would go well with American norms and things like that. So one thing that they did in particular was the characters uh, Sailor Neptune and Uranus. If you know them, you would know that they're actually lesbian lovers. But if you watched the American version when you were a kid growing up, you noticed that they were portrayed as cousins, which is a weird thing 
because yeah, even when I was a kid, I could tell you, I remember watching them and I'm like, they have a weird cousin relationship going on. And that's because they were trying to erase essentially who they were, which was a part of their identity, which, you know, took away from them and everything like that. Uh, the show went on to eliminate as much of what they could as possible of what they deemed to be, you know, not appropriate for American audiences to the point that they even eliminated the fifth season where if you're not aware of what happens in Sailor Moon season five, it's actually where we have male, <laughs> we have actual men transforming into females, which they thought would be, whoa, whoa, way too much. So that was that. Let me hit you with another one. We also have Yu-Gi-Oh! So I'm pretty sure for a lot of you guys, you guys played the card game, you watched it and things like that. So Yu-Gi-Oh! was a very popular series where, you know, you were dueling and playing with, you know, dual monsters and things like that, what they called. A lot of the stuff in the English dub that got erased was the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh! was a lot darker than it actually was. I'm pretty sure you guys remember the Shadow Realm and everything like that. Uh, that was there and that was portrayed. Uh, what was actually going on there is the fact that Yugi or y Yugi, Yami Yugi would take the people that he was fighting and, you know, essentially kill them and trap them in the Shadow Realm and, un and do obscene things to them and all that stuff, which all, of course, got eliminated to, you know, be more kid friendly and things like that and all that. But yeah, you know, what? I'll pause there. I'll let you all settle with that. See what you got. Okay, perfect. So I'll be handling the first rebuttal here. So first, I would really like to frame the question here of dub versus sub. So first of all, if we're talking about dub versus sub, we are assuming that the person watching is a primary English speaker. Um, they might know some other languages, um, or maybe even they know a little bit of Japanese, but if they need to watch the show in subtitles, that means that they don't understand Japanese well enough to be able to listen to the show. So they are a primary speaking English person. So if they're a primary speaking English person and they're, you know, choosing between dub and sub, really what we're choosing between is um, we are choosing between the reading or being able to listen to the show. So when it comes to cultural references, um, a lot of those cultural references are still going to be missed in the sub because they're not going to be portrayed, you know, by the person's voice necessarily, unless you can understand the context because you know the language. If you don't know the language, you know, sometimes just reading it on screen, you, you can miss the mark just as often as you can miss the mark when you are changing the language over to dub and the voice actor is trying to portray whatever cultural reference is there. Now, with that said, as dubbing gets better and as the voice actors become more in tune with what the anime is trying to do, a lot less of those cultural references are going to be missed by dub. And I, I don't think that, you, you know, you can do anything to improve the sub as far as translations, whereas with the dub, you can adjust tones, you can adjust, you know, meaning, and you can try to get closer to the original cultural references um, and the original intended meanings. So that's that stuff is getting better, but I think the only way to truly have that isn't a matter of sub versus dub. It's a matter of can you speak Japanese or can you not speak Japanese, which isn't the question that we're really attacking here. Now, the other thing you had said is that sometimes the dub is a week or two behind sub. Now, if we remember even just a few years back, um, Dragon Ball Super, Naruto, um, shows like that, the dub was literally months and months and months, if not years behind the sub. Whereas now we're only a week or two behind, which is a big difference. There's a lot less spoilers to be had. And I think we're going to be coming to a point where the dub is going to be coming out you know, equal to the sub. And we are seeing that with some of the newer anime is that the dub is being released the same week as the sub. Now that's not always the case, but as anime becomes more popular in North America, we are seeing that becoming more and more of the case of the dub being released the same week as the sub. Now there is some, um, you know, definite injustices between like Sailor Moon and Yu-Gi-Oh uh, where, the original people who were dubbing the anime, they changed it a lot. They tried to make it more kid-friendly because 
they saw it as a cartoon. They saw anime coming in. They're like, this is a cartoon. This is what our American cartoons look like. Whereas in Japan, anime isn't a cartoon. It's not for kids. It has more adult references. So as anime has become more ingrained in American culture, it is becoming more like it is in Japanese culture. And there is more adult things being shown. So yes, those um, animes that were dubbed, uh, you know, back in the 90s, back when we were kids, they did really miss the mark on a lot of those adult themes. However, I think that that's kind of a positive in a way. Obviously, there's some things like, um, you know, portraying the two characters as cousins instead of as lesbian lovers, like, that is just not right. That is not okay. But making some of those themes more kid friendly is what allowed a lot of us in North America to get into anime. And now that it's becoming more adult in North American culture, we're able to enjoy it more as the adult themes that are being portrayed. And there's a lot less things being adjusted in anime today than there was before. Um, anime earlier on when we were kids, it was being adjusted. It was being, you know, North Americanized, whereas now the anime is being portrayed very similar, if not the same in Japanese as it is in English. And there's a lot less of those changes being made. And we are getting a lot more of those adult themes um, showing through. Um, so those are kind of all my counterpoints. Now, I think my like main point for um, dub versus sub is the fact that um, as, you know, primary English speaking um, watchers, as somebody that either needs to choose to read the anime or to watch the anime, we have a lot less access to the Japanese voice actors than we do the English voice actors. Um, you know, it's very unlikely for a English speaking watcher of anime to be able to name a Japanese voice actor, whereas a lot of us will know a few, if not more than a few English voice actors. And we've even befriended some of them. Some of them have even came on this exact podcast. One being Kyle Haybear, the English voice actor for Fatcom. Um, so to me, I think we get a lot more of that kind of star power. Like if we go watch uh, a superhero movie and we see Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool, we can kind of like, we know who Ryan Reynolds is. We don't get that same effect with subbed anime, whereas we do get that with dubbed anime. We can go to, you know, conventions, we can meet these people, we can reach out to them, um, we can have them on podcasts, we can get to know who they are as people, and we can create these stars in dub, and we just don't get that in sub. Now, do they get that with the Japanese voice actors in Japan? Absolutely. But the Japanese people aren't watching the anime and sub. They're just watching it in their native language. So that is my point. Evan, would you like to handle rebuttal, rebuttal number one for uh, team sub, please? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be I'm a blanket statement. This. I mean, I like both. <laughs> <laughs> we're being honest. I like both subs and dubs. That was a weird sentence to say, but I didn't mean it in any other way than sub and dub. Um, but basically, oh if God, I'm going to rebuttal your that. point, what? No one basically, if I'm going to rebuttal, the only one that thought that. <laughs> well, there was an awkward pause, and I was like, you know, maybe that was weird. But anyway, now we're all um, thinking it. Now we're all thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the question at hand, and 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 the whole uh, problem at hand. I mean, if we're if we're looking at sub and dub, and if we're going to use like excuses to gain a, a wider audience, I'm all for that. But but when you look at the context, as Eddie was saying, with with between sub and dub, I mean, with subs, you're going to get a lot more of like the meatiness. I feel like of the anime, and, and it feels a lot more authentic. Like if you look at some comparison YouTube videos of, I'm going to use Sasuke as an example. Um, uh, Sasuke's a bitch. Uh, basically, you. you can see between the voice actor. <laughs> you're welcome. You can see between the voice actor and the American uh, dub and the sub in some of the the confrontational points. It it almost is like laughable when it's the English version, but when you hear the like the the uh, the sub version, it, you you get the raw emotion of of what Sasuke should be like, and it makes him seem a lot more of like a likable character than just some whiny little kid. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm offending people with Sasuke. I know everyone has their own their own like likes and dislikes. Um, but 
I feel like you get a lot more raw emotion when you're looking at the sub compared to the dub. And we've all seen dubs where you hear the English voice acting cast and like, especially early on in some dubs, like it's the worst thing you'll ever listen to in your life. You're, you're, it almost turns you off of a show. Um, like it took me a long time to listen to Luffy in the one piece um, dub because his voice is just so high and scratchy. And, and I'm, I'm going to be honest, it, it grew on me and I did, I ended up really loving one piece and I'm like 300 episodes in, I'm not all the way caught up yet. Um, but I, I like to watch that one dubbed because it's usually like my side anime. Like I'll be doing something, but watching that on the side. But if, but if it's like something I'm really into, I feel like you need to watch the sub to really appreciate it. Um, and it's like natural form and natural way. It's, it's like when you see a movie and they have a book and you're looking at the movie and you're like, that movie was good, but the book is better. You know, you know what I'm saying? Crickets. I, I'll end it there. I'll end it there. <laughs> <laughs> did, oh, no, you, I know what you're saying. I was just trying to make sure that I let you talk before I just, did, you know, did, the did, fire did, and the flames. Do you have to? Do you have to go, Evan? Uh, yes, I do have to go. I I really appreciate you guys having me on here. I'm sorry I got a jet so quick. No worries. We had some technical difficulties getting started, so you got started a little bit late. But take care, Evan. Thank you for chiming right, in. Eddie, we will keep the conversation you. going. Um, oh, you're with... gonna miss the fireworks show now. <laughs> oh, no. oh no! Eddie, you got this. I've seen your power. Uh, well, All right, I'll try. I'll try. Bye, well, uh, awesome, bye, Evan. All right, man. Take it easy. Uh, well, now for uh, Team Sub, we will have uh, Eddie trying to fight back from all of those just amazing points. If you guys can't tell, I'm being sarcastic uh, from Evan. Um, he might have fought a little bit more for Team Dub than he did for Team Sub there. But uh, anyways, it is uh, rebuttal number two time for Team Dub. Zach, hit us off here. Hit, hit some home runs here, baby. Let's oh. go. So just I'm going to I'm going to go off of Evan's statement since he's kind of pseudo on our team now and how he said, I mean, he, he likes to be able to watch and do things. I mean, I don't know about you. I'm literally standing this whole entire time. I can't sit that long. So, you know, I like to walk around, do things. If I want to walk into the kitchen and have a little snack, I can hear what's going. I can hear Luffy's raspy voice. You know, I I'm able to do that. I, mean, I have so much more room for activities. Bottom line. And how you mentioned the translation. Yes, obviously it does change it a bit. And especially we're, we're talking like 90s cartoons dub to now for sure. And it, like Max actually said, he said it perfectly. Dub is evolving. Bottom line, it's constantly growing, adapting, getting better. Sub, what can you do? How much better can you get? The thing is, is that it's still not even a perfect translation on sub. You know, they're trying to translate it to English and there's still going to be things missed. There's still going to be words missed, regardless of what language you are, Japanese, Spanish, Korean, whatever. There's just some things that don't translate and they're not going to translate or at least in the context of what, what they might have. So, yes, you're getting a little bit of a better translation. And, yeah, you might be able to get it a week or two beforehand. But at that point, if you're going to worry about spoilers, you still got manga. We'll go into that. You can read it before you even watch it. And you're going to have a lot of people there who are going to probably say that too. But at the same time, it's like, seriously, what is a week at, to get a whole show completely changed with a completely different voice actor timed and perfected to hit that cue? That's pretty good. Squid Games didn't hit that cue, but their dub wasn't all there. But still, that dub probably is the reason why the show is so huge now all over the world, not just anime worldwide. So this is a regular show on Netflix, destined to be number one. Yeah, you have a lot of people, again, they watched it in the, their native tongue and it watched it with the subs, took off the closed captioning. I watched it in dub because I eat when I watch and I crunch very loud. So I don't have very good hearing. And it helped me out a lot. And it was a great show. And going back to now your little changes, um, I did not know that about Sailor Moon. That was definitely interesting to learn. But even too, I think that's a basis of Pokemon did it. How many times was James dressed like a woman or an actual woman, had boobs, and it was televised, dubbed? Maybe it's based off the popularity at the time, how much they're going to push. Because there's been a lot more adult or edgier dubbed 
animes that have come through and it's probably based off of their popularity at the time you were selling cards toys video games the show so they were pushing it sailor moon though it was an awesome show an anime and manga i think it didn't hit as many many people plain and simple i didn't watch it and but that's cool to know actually about that and we all know, even though if we didn't watch it, Sailor Moon could still be Goku. We do all know that. She is really OP. <laughs> like, extremely OP. But, yeah, I mean, that, that really hits it. We're growing. We're adapting. We're getting faster, better. Translations are getting better. It's opening up a whole more market. It's getting more people in. So that way they can adapt more and evolve more and put more money into it and make it better. In the meantime, you can read about it. Dub is growing. Dub is growing. Eddie, hit us up with uh, your rebuttal number two. So yeah, so kind of continuing on, like, you know, when we were talking about earlier when I was kind of introducing how you're losing maybe, you know, based on the language that it's originally in, the context, the dialect, you know, the style of speaking or the phrasing and everything like that. Uh, let's start with the word, uh, let's start with the word dub. Uh, depending on where you are, who you are and everything, that word has a different meaning for everybody. Uh, for dub, it can mean lame. For some people, it could mean that you're about to drop $20 worth on marijuana. <laughs> hey, I mean, it can mean, you know, it can mean all these things. So meaning, as you can see, is going to change depending on when you translate it or how people interpret that word. Uh, here, I'll give you a very popular one from Naruto, uh, specifically where he was talking, or where you a lot of, if you ever listened to the subtitle version, you would have heard him say Dr. Bayo. He would say that a lot. That was like his signature thing. It was part of him. Uh, when it got translated into English, it became part or known as believe it. And of course, that wasn't really the true meaning. It was more of a, you know, type deal because that was just like his phrase. It was meant more of a, yeah, you know, like when I'm talking like that, people are like, oh, I get you. That's just kind of how you are. Uh, another thing. Uh, that essentially, well, we're not really uh, continuing on with that a little bit, is the fact that the dubbed version eventually stopped including the phrase altogether because it took, and I would say that that took away from Naruto as a character. And of course, I'll, I'll kind of give you guys a little bit more on that. But uh, the next thing that I was looking at was honorifics. So, when, you know, when we come to talking to people in Japanese, they have very clear ways for you to understand who you're talking to and essentially where they are in terms of like respect or hierarchy. Like, you know, you'll hear the word san, chan, and kun a lot. Uh, usually san is gonna be for, you know, has a lot of respect behind it. Usually you're using it to people that are older, uh, more, you know, uh, that misters or misses and things like that is when you attach that to. Uh, you'll have chan, which is something that's kind of more familiar. Uh, usually people that are like kin or, you know, children or things like that are usually, you know, when you hear the word chun. Uh, kun is, you know, pretty much someone who's kind of like your equal. It's very, it's less polite. Uh, usually people around the same age or something when they're kind of going with that. Uh, a lot of the times I would say that those honorifics get lost or in, especially when you're kind of dubbing, because, you know, even in American or I would say English, Calling someone that's kind of like older without like the proper titles is a sign of disrespect. And of course, you know, sometimes in shows it kind of comes off like that. And it's like, uh, that doesn't mean, it doesn't make sense, you know, especially like if we're thinking about like Naruto and Kakashi, like you can tell clearly when watching the dub, he starts calling him like Kakashi. And eventually they started adding the sensei part to make it more formal and more, you know, that yes, you are my instructor, you know, this means respect and things like that. But if you automatically heard it in the subbed, you knew just from that eventually you know picking up over time just kind of hearing that and things like that and i will tell you this like i mean all those things i because i would hear that i was like okay i hear sun or coon or chun it made me curious so then that's when i went to go look it up and then i was like okay now i have more understanding now i'm getting to appreciate even more of what's going on because you know i'm lit sitting here i'm learning uh let me think let me think what else was there? are you saying we can't learn from dub what do you mean learn from dub uh it's just yeah. i'm talking about the mannerisms and things like that or like you know the language the, like, i'm talking about things that are lost essentially because of how you cannot because like i was saying remember a lot of the things that go into this is 
they're picking these people, the voices and things like that, because they fit the profile of the character and they're going to do the character justice. I mean, we do it here in America when we're picking our, you know, roles and things like that. But a lot of the time, it's like, as you can see in dub, it's happened more often than not. And I will say, yes, slowly but surely it is getting better. But still, a lot of the times, you know, they will just drop the ball on, they pick a character and people are like, Ugh, we can even go with, let's go with a modern anime. Uh, new one, Asta. I can't tell you how many people have said that they hate the American voice actor's sound because he's just like, it's just too much. And that's kind of part of the character, you know, he's a little overboard. And I mean, in the Japanese, it starts like that. He starts overboard, but it tones down and eventually it matches exactly and it's not as bad. But apparently in American, it just kind of like stayed like that for too long. And it was just like, yeah, I know some people were actually just turned away from the show because they just couldn't get past that voice. They're like, no, his voice is too annoying. I can't stand that. And so I feel like that was actually kind of, you know, damning to, you know, bringing new people in with a new modern day anime by doing that. Uh, but what else? Uh, changing, what do I think about changing? Oh, I already kind of went it with the meaning of the show, you know? Uh, a lot of the times, you know, even now, they're doing it less and less, I will say, but censoring. Like censoring is a big thing, you know, it's like accommodating and all that stuff. But uh, I would say, you know, Dragon Ball Z, even for us, that's another big example. Like a lot of the things that were censored out there, they, they took out the drugs, the alcohol, the smoking, a lot of the adult themes, you would, or, you know, what you would consider to be adult themes in the dub version. Uh, even their mannerisms, the way they act. A lot of the mannerisms really tie into the character and everything like that. And so sometimes, when they do that, all of a sudden you're wondering and when you're watching it in another language, like why are they making these weird gestures or these weird movements? It doesn't kind of like match up, you know, because sometimes the way you speak and everything, the way you move and all that reflects that as well. So that's where I'll end on, on that one. I gotcha. Okay, so we'll each do one more rebuttal and then we'll do closing statements for each. And uh, then I'll do just kind of a final little closeout and we'll go from there. So as for this rebuttal, um, I would say just kind of building off of something that Zach actually said is light novels and manga and reading. So I think sub, you, you know, an argument you can make is like, well, some people like reading and they're going to, you know, read the sub. Well, you know, when you compare like, let's say like an American book and, um, and movie let's say harry potter right well when you read harry potter it's all words on a page so you're formulating your own images in your head compared to the movie whereas when we're talking about sub versus dub that's not the case we are not watching words on a screen and then formulating our own images in our head and creating that we are still watching the images on the screen and reading what the words would say now, as we're reading what the words would say, that is taking away from our ability to also see all of the little details on the screen. So I will say there's been times where I've watched sub as it's came out and then I've gone back and I've watched the dub versions of those episodes. And even though I watched the sub versions to keep up with it, like as it's coming out week to week, I've also, when I went back and I watched the dub versions, I enjoyed it more thoroughly because I caught little details that I didn't catch the first time watching it through in sub. So an example would be when I was watching the latest season of My Hero Academia, there was a Christmas episode. And when I was originally watching it through in sub and reading it, I didn't realize that each of their little Santa hats had something that represented the character on it. And I didn't catch that at all when it was in sub. And then when I was watching it at dub and when I didn't have to focus on the words on the screen, I was able to catch some of those small little details. And those small little details, in my opinion, is what makes a, a good anime great. And when you're missing those because you're so focused on reading the, su the subtitles on the screen, you miss out on a lot of those things that really add that extra little spice and jazz. It's like, you know, the difference between eating like a burger at McDonald's and going to a place that specializes and has amazing chefs that specialize in making gourmet burgers that are going to be absolutely amazing. It's the little details. It's the finer things that add that depth to the anime. Now, um, 
as far as like voice actors and stuff like that, I think, you know, with dub, the name of the game is the fact that it is new. It is not well developed. Yes, they've been doing it for a while, but it was so uncommon compared to, you know, anime in Japanese. Like there's so much anime coming out in Japanese and, you know, there was like very few when we were growing up coming out in English and now there's tons coming out in English, which means they are getting more voice actors. They're getting higher quality voice actors and the voice actors in the field are getting more practice. Now, going back to your Asta example, yes, Asta did hold on to that kind of annoying mannerism for a little bit too long, but you also have to give it to the voice actor because that was his first ever role as a voice actor ever. And you kind of have to blame the director in a way because the director should have guided him a little bit better. But considering how lovable the character of Asta is and how much he grows into that voice and the fact that he does get it, maybe not quite as fast as the Japanese voice actor, but the fact that he does get it and the Japanese voice actor has done many, many roles compared to the English voice actor, this being his first ever role, you kind of got to cut him a little bit of a break because like that's pretty new into being a voice actor. And he's done a phenomenal role that a lot of people really, really love, even if it took him a little bit longer to catch the mark. Um, And as he goes on to do other roles, he will grow and he will get better. And again, the name of the game is the fact that dub is new, dub is growing. But as it grows, I think that anime and this art form that we all really know and love becomes accessible to more people that it wasn't accessible to when it was more in sub and animes weren't being dubbed as much. Eddie, you're up. Okay. Yeah, uh, I would say this. Here's a new one uh, and, and everything to that. Because, you know, like I said, you're, it's all growing and everything and it is evolving over time. And yes, definitely that director should have, you know, guided him a lot better. Because, yeah, I mean, when we're talking about, you know, original voice actors, I will tell you this. Here is the advantage that they have. Because it is in Japanese, they get to have the script from the creator written in their language. And so, of course, they're going to understand the cultural nuances scattered throughout the show. And, of course, they probably grew up with it because, you know, it is part of their culture. So, of course, they have a one-up on everybody here in the dub because of that. And that's why I feel like when it comes to being able to portray and everything, like I said, it's going to come off more authentic. It's going to feel cooler, even better at times, you know. Uh, another cool thing that they do is, you know, you'll pro- you probably notice it, that sometimes in Japanese shows, they borrow English words. You know, sometimes uh, they'll borrow whatever the word is. I can't even think of a word right now to think of. Or hamburger. Yeah. How about that? Hamburger. Like, And then, of course, they add their little Japanese like saying or way of saying it to it. And it just kind of makes it cool because, you know, all of a sudden you're like, ah, hamburger added into the Japanese. Now it's all of a sudden a cool thing. Just kind of like how even in America, we do that as well. Like we'll take other words from other languages and adapt them. And of course, meaning, you know, we're kind of creating that culture of connectedness and things like that, which is a thing, you know, that I appreciate that the Japanese do, especially when they're like trying to keep attention and things like that. Because I will tell you, like whenever I hear those and I'm like, ah, a little bit of English, there we go, ah, and then I like the spin that you gave it, because now I suddenly want to pronounce the word the way you pronounce it, versus the way I have been pronouncing it, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much where, yeah, we're, I mean, we're kind of coming to the agreement of, you know, that yes, lots of differences and things like that, and there is lots of growing, and dub seriously does have, you know, a ways to go before it's like, I would say, maybe there, neck and neck with sub. For sure. I will agree with that. Zach, you want to give us our closing statements for Team Dub? I like how it's cool that you said that you liked when they were speaking those little English words in the sub. So you liked how they dubbed themselves, pretty much. You like the dub in the sub, is what you're saying. Where's Evan? This is perfect right here. Remember, I'm not... Okay. For the purposes of this show and this episode, I remember I decided to be the devil's advocate on this. <laughs> so just say it. So there you have that. And, you know, I think a lot of those, uh, you know, you were saying like censorship and all of that. I, I think we're talking more 90s, early 2000s at this point. It's it's not as common anymore. And we're talking early Naruto, yeah, early Dragon more. Ball early Pokemon, all of these. So it, it's obviously less and less. But at the same time, you, these companies were really only going towards children 
they were only promoting towards children and advertising towards that because they're thinking in their head, it's just a cartoon. And you have people nowadays and these thing is these children grew up to be us and we still love our cartoons and we still love our anime. So it, it's growing and we're having children and we're teaching our children. And the, that's where it's a little bit older. I kind of, I think what you're saying, because this, a lot of that censorship is gone. There's still obviously some, but you know, to an extent you can't show, but American TV is a little bit more harsher, I think, than all over the world, too. So th there's way less censorship. It really, your, your argument is the, the translation to an extent or certain mannerisms and, and time. I mean, which all of those are going to be coming. And the thing is, is uh, to make it an anime, it has to be made pre in Japan. It has to be made eastern side of the, of the world, where like Avatar, the, the Last Airbender is not considered an anime. Western culture cartoon so we can't really say that dub is ever going to be the same as sub because it's got to be made sub to even be made dub first if not then it's just an English cartoon or a, a, a Filipino cartoon or a Mexican cartoon wherever it was made so you know it's it, it's not that we're still behind it's that we took a different route to get more people to do all of that we're just banking off you you're our, you're our, our source, and we're gonna go off of that and get everybody. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think you're missing one thing in our closing statement. All I gotta say is, Spirited Away, dubbed version, wins an Oscar. <laughs> it win an Oscar. The wins, it wins an Oscar, and blew up box know, offices in Japan. Didn't yeah. get an Oscar until it was dubbed. <laughs> And <laughs> Mike Trump. And um, due to that Oscar, I think Spirit Away was one of the very first like anime movies that really grew anime outside of Japan and blew it up in North America and then expanded it into other countries as well. And I would say that, you know, that is a huge part of history that has led to, you know, anime being in all of our hands from that time, because there'd be a lot less people into anime in general if it wasn't for that. Now, with that said, Eddie, you get uh, your closing statement here. Like I said, whatever your choice, whatever your preference, I've kind of laid it out for you guys. So for those of you that like, you know, want to become a purist or something, or you prefer more like watching things in their original because of the context, because here, I'll even bring up one last thing. Let's talk about Squid Game. Completely not anime related, but we did notice that there were people watching dubbed. And then, of course, there was an issue with the subbing. There was an issue with the subbing because there was a thing going on where the way the words were being like translated and things like that were not correctly done as to provide the right meaning, which definitely did change the context. And then, of course, you know, created this whole thing online, which allowed and everything to bring more hype to it because of that, because of like how when you watched it with English audio versus English closed caption, which is for like the hearing impaired and things like that, it created two different meanings as to when people were saying something, how it came off and how it was, you know, presented or like how the character was then now portrayed or now understood to be and things like that. So things like that, you definitely, I mean, when I was I will say this, watching it, feeling it, hearing it and all that stuff, I will say it, I get more out of it when I hear the original actors, no matter what language. It doesn't matter to me whether it's English voice actors, as long as I like to watch things in their original voice actors or, or in the original audio that it was created. It could be Russian, it could be Japanese, it could be freaking Chinese, Korean, doesn't really matter. It could even be, you know, European, all that stuff. Like, I like watching things in their original for that purpose is to really get that feeling as to what that director had in mind and everything and then reading and then seeing it. But I don't know. But of course, you know, this is just kind of like me, my personal perspective and take on those things. Cause I know when it comes to reading, if anything, having read subtitles for so long, it feels weird not having them on the screen, especially like when people are like, no. And I'm like, uh, I feel like I'm missing something. Cause sometimes I will say that sometimes I will miss things when people say things like some, sometimes people say things. I'm like, wait, what? But if I read it and I heard it, it sticks in my brain a lot better. But yeah, I would say, like I said, 
everybody now has an idea. You can choose which path you'd like to go. You can go the sub path, you can go the dub path. In reality, it's gonna be it's up to you. Absolutely. And thank you, Eddie. I appreciate that. And yeah, that is kind of the purpose of this episode. We wanted to stir the pot a little bit. We wanted to have a little bit of strife, a little bit of uh, debate between the two, kind of debate which one was better. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to personal preference. Some people are going to enjoy the sub a little bit more um, just because that's how they grew up watching it. That's how they like watching it. They like the Japanese voice actors. They like reading it that's just the way that they like it. And some people are going to like the dub. And I think there's really good points for both sides. Um, but yeah, I think we had a lot of fun today. We had a nice little debate about the two and we want to get you guys involved too. So in the YouTube comments or on Instagram, let us know if you're team dub or if you're team sub and why let's keep this debate going within the community and let's keep things going because, you know, there is going to be people on both sides. It's just fun to kind of hear the perspective from both sides and to keep the conversation going. And thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Zach. And Evan's not here, but thank you, Evan, for coming on and doing this episode with me. It's been a ton of fun. Um, guys, let's let people know where they can find you. Eddie, what's your social media handles and stuff? Uh, yeah, you can find me at plus ultra Eddie all together. No underscores or anything like that. Uh, I'm on Twitch. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm on TikTok, Twitter, pretty much. Like I said, if you're looking for me, type in plus ultra Eddie, more than likely that name will pop up. Absolutely. Um, Zach, where can people find you? Uh, Instagram, TikTok, Zachbot55, one word. Uh, I got a YouTube, Zachbot55 as well. Still haven't posted any videos on it. I'll get to it eventually. We'll see. But um, also too, check out. Don't forget, just saying. Like we are, I think we're. I think are you all wearing just saying right now? Look we at are that. all wearing just saying right we're now. All Look at that. Two fat gums and a bakugo. But yeah, just saying. You could use my code Olympus. You can use Evan's code Nerd Lifts as well. Either or, they're both going to get you fifteen percent off. Um, I'm also linked up with Arms Race Nutrition now too, an awesome supplement line. Check them out. My code for that is Zach Ten. So not Olympus yet, but we'll see. Hopefully we can get that changed, but yeah, yeah. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much, Zach. And uh, yeah, you guys can find Evan at, uh, I think it's Evo Maki. Evo Uzumaki. Evo, Evo Uzumaki. Uzumaki. And Instagram. Twitch, you know, all the fun stuff. Uh, all the Instagrams are linked below, so go follow them. The YouTubes are linked below as well. Zach's on there, even though he hasn't posted anything yet, but <laughs> guess. Go Once follow. I get 10 followers, I'll post something. <laughs> guys you heard it here 10 followers and he'll go post something go follow it. Uh, amazing um you guys can find me on twitter instagram facebook and tiktok at max hall fitness you guys can follow the podcast at the plus ultra fitness podcast and as always guys thank you so much for listening i hope you guys enjoyed the episode um, it's been a lot of fun, a little different than our normal episode. Usually we agree on everything. So it's nice to have some like back and forth and we want to hear the back and forth within the community too. let us know chime in for uh, team Eddie and Evan on team sub and chime in for uh, team Zach and Max on uh, team dub. And uh, yeah, like Eddie said, at the end of the day, it's your personal choice. If you're going to watch anime in uh, dub or in sub, I'm only going to judge you a little bit. <laughs> but uh whatever you guys want to watch anime and sub or dub it's up to you and we love you thanks for participating guys and thank you so much for listening peace out later